What's going on guys? Welcome on to today's video. It's a rainy day, but I am not deterred by that. Getting out on this, the Honda NC750X for 2023. Yes, this bike does have a 750 engine. No, it is not the same one that is inside the new Transalp or the Hornet. Those two bikes, the engine is kind of your more traditional upright and it's got a shorter piston, so it goes quicker. So it revs a little bit more and a little bit more lively, a little bit fun. Whereas this, Honda have banked the engine down uh, and are given the piston a longer stroke. So it's not as exciting in, uh, in the grand schemes. This is gonna be your workhorse, you're kind of every day riding it to work. Then can you go and do some long miles and it's comfortable for that. Your, your Trans Alp and your Hornet, they're gonna be uh, your weekend fun bikes with that 750 engine. This engine though, it does produce a 58 brake horsepower, which is not a lot, especially for a 750 engine, but it does come in with 69 newton meters of torque. That's gonna kind of save it when you are out and about. The newton meters of torque is gonna be where uh, it's just gonna start helping with those gears, start pulling you through it, because it can't rely on the brake horsepower. Let's look at the electronics then on this bike. Starting at the front, we do have LEDs. We've got a kind of uh, a funky looking um, <laughs> head unit for that. Bringing us back, we have got this traditional black and white LCD screen. Nothing fancy about it. But what's good to see is we do have four rider modes. We've got Sport, Standard, Rain and User user or she can go in you can change the parameters for power delivery engine braking traction control for the standard nc750 that's pretty much it for the uh for the electronics like i said you can even get your stock or your dct but this specific demo bike has got the comfort pack on it that's going to give you a taller windscreen a center stand and heated grips so for the heated grips it's located on the left hand side and you just push the button pops up on the screen in the center and you got five different heat settings and then off ergonomics then i'm not a small bloke and i'm not a light bloke but actually this bike is really comfortable to ride bottom half the pegs are situated nicely between my hips and my knees so there's not a strong bend on my knees they're kind of just a very nice natural relaxed riding position top half is fairly upright and the handlebars are a comfortable distance from me. So yes, I could see myself doing plenty of miles on this bike. The only thing for me is the wind protection. When you're doing kind of 30 miles an hour under, it's fine, there's no dramas. When you start getting up 40, 50, 60 and into the kind of motorway speeds, even though this is the taller windscreen, it kind of hits me about my eye rail level. Uh, and there is, there is a bit of buffeting yeah so when i'm at motorway speeds the wind is kind of at the top of my helmet so there is a little bit of buffeting short people might not find uh, any of that uh, an issue but it is one to note if you are on the taller side looking at suspension and brakes we've got 41 mil inverted forks at the front i'm 115 kilos like i said i'm not a not a skinny chicken and i'm having absolutely no dramas with the suspension I'm not getting bounced around or pogoed or any sharp jarring through my back. So suspension is pretty good. Remember, this is only a budget bike. Uh, brakes, we do have a single 320mm at the front. In the grand schemes of brakes, there's not a lot of braking power. But actually, there's more than enough when you get on it to not worry about kind of your, your hard braking situations. This bike does have Honda's emergency brake signaling. So if you do slam on the brakes, you will notice the hazard lights will flash whilst you are emergency braking. And then as soon as you stop, hazard turn off. I've found with the handling, when you're in the faster flowing sections, there's, there's no dramas. But on your initial kind of pitch in into the corner, it does feel a little bit sluggish. It doesn't just drop nicely because some bikes you're on and they really just go as soon as you start getting into the corner. That's not, that's not this bike. But slower speeds, like obviously where you're not kind of dropping her in, but she does handle handles nicely. 
plenty of ease kind of getting around any potholes or filtering through traffic looking at the weight of this bike wet then we're coming in at 214 kilos for the standard and to be honest where it's got such a low seat height you can't really feel that I can't personally uh, if you go for the DCT option adds a little bit more weight coming in at 224 kilos so let's remember that's what this is <laughs> same again you can't feel can't feel the weight there's no issues there well before I take my helmet off I'll show you this quickly take the key there's another key slot push it in turn it to the right and this compartment opens up no fuel tank a massive storage compartment I've got everything I need for today in here size of it they say you can fit a helmet in there as well fuel tank with the key in push it to the left and in the rear seat there you go that's your fuel tank there so what they have done is for gas tank move from there to the rear uh, the ECU and air filter they've moved under this central section here and with the engine come around to the right hand side see if it looks a bit better this is what I mean by they kind of laid the engine down they've banked it down that's opened up that space massively so now you've got a huge storage compartment where you can fit a full face helmet in plus you've still got everything else like normal this is what I mean this can be your everyday workhorse I like it to get the seat down this little arm here lift the seat up slightly lift it up and there we go Honda well done so let me know what you think about the DCT uh, is it an option that you'd personally go for or are you going to stick with your, your traditional clutch and uh, gear lever anyway let's look at the front like I said LEDs at the front uh, I like this kind of like nose bug eyed looking uh, shape it's got a little bit different only a single 320mm disc at the front surprisingly actually uh, for only a single 320 there is enough braking on this uh, you just need to kind of apply the pressure a little bit more do you think it's a good idea that Honda have kind of laid the engine down to open up the extra storage uh, inside there me personally I do it's nice to have some storage on the bike that doesn't require extra luggage or panniers or back box where this bike doesn't have uh, any gears so when you're on a hill like we are now you can't leave it in gear it's got a handbrake so this lever here you pull it up towards you and then it'll lock in place and then just through there just about make it out a little red ring that means the handbrake is applied to release the handbrake you're going to pull this back towards you and at the same time push that in and then that will then collapse back down handbrake off very old school lcd screen maybe it's time to update that this bike is a kind of no frills bike it kind of does what it does and it does it nicely um, i think for 7850 pounds for the standard one it's a good price for the DCT option, it's going to up it a little bit more to £8,679. Is it worth it? You let me know. We do have four different colour options. We've got black, grey, red or blue. Once again, in grey, it's kind of a no thrills uh, colour. It doesn't stand out and make it look ooh, delicious. But Honda's got to keep the price down somewhere. Well, let's finish off this review on the road. So even though the fuel tank is at the rear, we've still got a 14 litre fuel tank uh, and the way this bike runs, you're going to get plenty of miles out of that even though it is a fairly small tank in the grand scheme of things. Seat height is really short. I'm 6'1", seat height is 800mm. So both feet flat on the floor, got a bend in my knees and with the seat you're sat in it rather than on top of it. So you kind of feel nice and uh, surrounded by the bike rather than perched on the top the tank is kind of sculpted so when your knees are tucked in uh, they kind of fit in the groove nicely so you've got a nice little bit of uh, wind bubble protection around you <sighs> okay so handbrake my foot is now on the foot brake lift this up push that in goes forward we're in neutral remember this is the DCT option we've got no gear lever down there we've got no clutch lever we are in neutral don't fall off the bike 
start her up to get her in from neutral into drive turn this off so you can hear me better we've got on the right hand side you've got a d at the bottom for drive n for neutral and then a and m on the left hand side a is automatic m is kind of like a, a manual every time it starts up it will be in automatic if you want to put it into uh, manual just push the button and it will change over the bottom right hand side will say d and that shows you're in drive which is for automatic uh, if you put it into m won't do it because the uh, engine's not running there you go push it and then uh, the d disappears and then from there you need to use the flappy panels so uh, left thumb left trigger finger thumb is going to go down the gearbox and then your finger is going to go up the gearbox just located back there uh, and that's how you would use it in the kind of manual mode but i'm going to put it into auto so i'm in gear and you just pull away turn and circle on this is really good you've got plenty of angle on the uh, handlebars remember you don't have the clutch lever to feather that power so you do need to keep giving it some throttle otherwise you are going to kind of come to a steady halt let's look at the engine then inside this honda mirrors are really good over 75 percent uh, of the mirror is visible behind me so my shoulders don't take up too much always nice to see uh, and they're really clear there's no vibrations that's kind of one thing you do notice with this bike is there isn't many vibrations at all maybe if you put it into manual and you get low in the uh low in the gearbox i.e you're in the third gear at six seven thousand rpm then yeah sure you'll feel the vibrations but when you're just casually riding around like this there is none you may think to yourself just because this has got the 750 engine and so is the trans alp they look kind of similar there's so many differences between this bike and the trans alp that you can understand why honda have kept both model lines guys let me know in the comments box below what do you think about the whole dct if you've ever ridden a manual car and then gone into an auto you'll know what i mean by the twitch in a car if you go to do a hard brake or with traffic lights or whatever <laughs> your left leg twitches for the clutch every now and then and it's exactly the same with this when you're coming into a, a situation like this naturally your, your hands start moving and your your feet start twitching muscle memory that's all it is but it is really easy a to use but b to change between automatic and kind of the manual mode so we'll do now we'll put it into manual push that button once d disappears now i've got to remember to use the flappy paddles if not i'll just be revving the tits off it <sighs> see why can't people like that just let people go remember left trigger finger the gearbox is super smooth you can barely tell it's going up the gearbox and my body's not moving there's there's no jerkiness like if that was a quick shifter it would be the smoothest quick shifter you've ever used some quick shifters are like this as you're going along like you know you've changed gears not in this down the gearbox exactly the same you could only really start to feel it when I went from 6th in down into 3rd like with any automatic car if you're in full auto and you're going along and say you're in 5th gear and you want to overtake you give the 4th uh, the throttle the bike will drop a gear so you can have a little bit more torque and power to get past exactly the same because this does have a low seat height when you are going around the corners you do need to be mindful of your pegs depending how you're riding with your feet if I'm just casual riding like this, just chilling out, I like to ride duck foot just to kind of keep the pressure off my knees. And then when I start getting into the twisties, I'll bring my feet onto the edge of the pegs. But when I am riding duck foot, going around some of these corners, you can feel your foot starting to touch the ground just because there's not a massive amount of ground clearance because of the seat height. With the four different rider modes, to change over between them, you've got a mode button on the left. You're going to keep pushing that until this long black bar is on the right hand side near whatever rider mode you're in and then from there you've got this select button up and down 
All you're going to do is push it, get to whichever one you want. And then when you're at it, come off the throttle and it'll engage. You can definitely tell the difference between rain and sport. Sport, the throttle is just, it's just a little bit more peppier. But then when it does start to do the wet stuff, put it into rain. And the throttle is so smooth, like this. The, the power delivery is really dulled down, which obviously is perfect for what you want, i.e. when it's raining. But there is a real noticeable difference. When you are in sport, it's pretty good. Uh, when you're at, say, third gear, 30 miles an hour, the on-off, there's not really any jerking. The only error I say there might be a little bit is the engine braking, but you can go into user and you can actually adjust the parameters of the engine braking. You can just smooth it out a little bit. End of the day, this is not an exciting bike. You don't buy something like this to get your thrills, to get your kicks, to have a real load of fun on the weekends and do some nice tours. Like I said, this is a, this is a work bike. You need to chomp down some miles and it's easy. There's no clutch, you're not gonna stall. You wanna ride this bike to work every day. <laughs> and then still have something to go out on the weekend. This will tick that box all day long. Well guys, this has been a quick run review of a Honda's NC750X for 2023. If you wanna see my full run review of the Honda Transalp, check out this video here. More importantly, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until the next one, ride safe.